So my name is Anna Anderson, and I am thrilled to be able to present today. The content that I'll be sharing is really about some of the big picture trends that have been changing in um, just America as a whole, and then how it impacts digital uh, marketing and in turn your business. And these um, sources that I have uh, pulled from are just a variety of different platforms, but I hope that it paints a comprehensive picture of where the um, digital world is heading and how you can tap into it. So let's go ahead and get started and we can just kind of review um, and have an open conversation. And I appreciate Caleb being able to just um, have that question a period at the end because there's a lot of um, changes happening in our marketplace. And so this report that I uh, pulled was one of the most recent reports that Yelp has shared with us regarding the changes within businesses statuses across the United States and each state has had uh, unique modifications within their region, but I think it's important to notate that there has been significant um, changes within the um, and just economy as a whole and users who are having to modify their business uh, style. And we all know this, but sometimes we don't always recognize the numbers and the changes um, across the United States. And so uh, we have the permanent, the temporary, and the total number of modifications within Yelp's algorithm. And now when we look at the segmentation of the different verticals, we um, probably could have guessed right off the top that restaurants and shopping and retail were probably hit the hardest as, although to many of us, they are essential businesses, but um, they truly aren't deemed essential in the government's eye. And so they had some of the um, most effects from the COVID and Rona, um, just uh, business shutdowns and realignment. And so I think there's still a lot of opportunity within these five categories that I pulled, but I think it's uh, necessary to look beyond the traditional forms of how we did business until um, looking at here's what uh, this new space looks like. And we can never go back to 100% to what it was, but now how do we move forward? We also have the ability to look at mobility uh, trends and changes and what is happening within now in this uh, picture within Minnesota and how are people driving and walking and um, going through uh, public transit. And to date, we have not seen a full um, recovery of transit and I did um, studies last week even looking at across the United States are we seeing more shifts where Americans are feeling more comfortable and in fact they are not we are still seeing elevated driving and walking um, statistics data coming in and a reduced uh, transit user pattern so all that being said, I think it's important to notate how can we leverage um, your target customers walking um, habits? How can we have a stronger presence as users are out and about and driving? And in the state of Minnesota, we saw significant shifts as well within Google My Business uh, trends and changes. So um, I think this is key information to be able to say, okay, how do we pivot our marketing? We recognize users are walking more. We recognize they're driving more. And this means that we have a very mobile engaged consumer. So when uh, COVID first hit towards the uh, first part of February when is when we began to see some uh, data points. It was February 27th. I remember it distinctly. I was looking at um, algorithm and search trends and all of a sudden there was massive shifts and you could see on Google My Business um, that we saw a significant spike in consumers who were in 
essence, working from home. So uh, those residential-based search queries spiked um, substantially uh, to unheard of levels for users who were searching for services or products or uh, local uh, places right around their home. So that is important if you are a business that was looking for the consumer to come to your place of uh, business and in turn, they are now seeking opportunities right close to them. So then let's look at, okay, if that is the case, what is happening in the retail and recreation categories? And I should notate that this data has not been uh, released to date. Um, only in 2020 did Google and Apple collectively decide to share this uh, privately held uh, data with uh, agencies and consumers alike so that they could pivot and change and make modifications to their marketing strategy. And so you can see for retail and recreation, we had a significant spike in consumers who were uh, saying, or I apologize, a reduction in consumers who are saying, hey, we want to go and maybe not do as much shopping. But at the beginning of COVID, this nosedived. And instead of the 40% that we see um, growth in the residential-based searches, it nosedived down to um, minus 40%. And so those are key um, indicators. We are starting to see some normalcy within the retail and recreation. And I hope that this uh, trend continues as we go into the holiday shopping season. Grocery and pharmacy are uh, deemed essential and uh, for good reason, consumers had to pivot and change to um, pick up uh, curbside, et cetera, but they still needed to be able to function and uh, gain their groceries and their medical needs. So there was a very little modification within uh, this category. What in the state of Minnesota did we see significant shifts within and at the peak time, we saw 210% um, surges in search queries for parks. And that means, you know, parks, public beaches, marinas, dog parks, plazas, and public gardens. Minnesota was kind of the mecca of where to go when you wanted to do outdoor recreation. And I know living in uh, Northern Minnesota, we saw many different, uh, individuals coming to our area and we're like, hey, I thought this was supposed to be locked down, stay at home, wear masks types of things. But Minnesota, uh, just because we are known as that uh, outdoor place, had a significant volume of increased search queries. Public transits, as we saw from Apple's data, is consistent and rings true for uh, Minnesota. We again have continue to see a reduction in search queries for this form of business. And then in today's um, current search climate, from uh, Google's perspective, we are still seeing an elevated volume of searches for residential based search queries. But again, it's not as elevated as it was in March, April, and May, it is beginning to return back down towards that um, baseline, which is what we um, would have thought as life as normal back in January and February, and now we know that um, our life can be turned upside down very quickly. And so hopefully this data is helpful for us to understand that there is a wide variety of um, user behavior shifts and how do we tap into that? How can your business thrive as we look at the massive increase in parks and recreation, the reduction of public transit, um, the uh, reduction of retail and recreation, but yet it is uh, beginning to come back up. So all of that being said, talk that information back um, in your mind as you're looking at marketing strategies and say, okay, does this connect to parks and recreation? Should I look at this as a future marketing opportunity? Because I truly don't believe that we will ever go back 100% to what life was. It is going to shift and change. And so for uh, Minnesotans, we now have a renewed zeal for our um, 
just uh, nature and getting out and exercising and mountain biking, et cetera. And so how can you as a business connect with that? I also look at what are some of the search trends and changes? What are the platforms that we should be aware of? And with that, um, what we have noticed is that consumers are navigating away from Google. But as you look at this um, report, it's not a significant um, modification in the ownership of uh, search. So Google still owns search by far. And so if you're wondering, okay, what platform should we be marketing on? You heard about DuckDuckGo, you know there's Bing out there, you know there's Yahoo, there's a wide variety of other platforms. But with that, mainly focus on Google. And that is just a, a consistent trend across a wide variety of different uh, data points that I have done research on. We have noticed that there has been significant volatility within Google's algorithm, and this has um, had a huge impact on many websites uh, ranking. And so I wanted to point out that we have seen in uh, September more volatility than we saw at normalcy. And so what do these lines mean? Red and orange mean that there was significant shifts within the search um, algorithm. So for example, you were ranked first on the, the, a key search term one day, and then you look at the where you rank the next day and you might not be able to be found, or you might be on the second page or third page. And then five days later, you do the same search query and you're back number one. This means there is high volatility, Google's rolling out algorithm modifications, and your marketing might stick or it might be lost. And so this is where a lot of our customers and probably you as your business go, okay, how do I um, make sure that I have stability in the midst of this turmoil? We've seen Google roll out more um, modifications to their algorithm in 2020 than many other years. So that's just uh, something to tuck away as well. We saw massive shifts in March, another massive shift, shift in June, and then uh, September. And hold on, October is uh, turning out to be one of the most volatile years in search as well, or volatile months as well, unless you are in the um, travel or you are in the um, travel and it is also leisure has an, another category as well. Um, some of the other categories that had high volatility because um, those were the too low. We saw sports, we also saw um, news, and we saw, oddly enough, home and garden, which connects to the residential-based search queries. So you start to map the lines and you can see that there are some industries that have thrived and some industries that have seen significant turbulence. We have also seen a significant shift in Google buying up uh, new uh, tech uh, companies as well as Bing. And what are they doing? They are positioning themselves to be at the forefront of technology. And so I wanted to take a moment and also bring our local community up to speed on what's been happening in the midst of the pandemic from a tech stack perspective. We have gone from web 1.0, now we live in web 2.0, and we are beginning to shift into what's called web 3.0. And web 3.0 is the linking of data where we will be able to harness AI, artificial intelligence, to be able to have the ability to analyze, interpret, and reconcile, and then predict what is the user activity gonna look like? And I think this is key because in today's world, we look at uh, marketing from very much a 2.0 lens. So what does Web 3.0 mean and how are we going to make sure that we are positioned for success? And it's really all about making sure that you have your um, data properly configured so that 
you are able to be compliant with some of the recent privacy regulations that are rolling out. Your database is going to need to upgrade a variety of different things, but for most businesses and entities online, you need to critically look at your privacy settings. And you might have seen Facebook has rolled out um, some uh, changes to their privacy settings and uh, Google Analytics has as well. There's a, many different uh, platforms that are now saying, here's our privacy setting. You can opt in or opt out. But this is at the heart what Google and Facebook and supporting platforms are saying, hey, you as the user have the right to be able to accept and have your data uh, documented and tracked and remarketed to or you can opt out. And so there's benefits from both sides of the fence, but this is an option that is now available to every uh, digital user uh, globally and it is changing the face of marketing. It is changing the data sets that we can uh, connect into and that is allowing some campaigns to thrive and grow and others are retracting and not seeing the traction that they saw prior to the pandemic. We are also seeing Google has made significant shifts and they are saying, hey, at search engine optimization is essential, but we also have user experience standards that we recognize you as the consumer is demanding. Um, and so here are in the gray, we can see what some of those user experience uh, signals were prior to uh, 2020. And now coming out of 2020, we now see that we have three additional uh, standards that we have to comply to. And I think the biggest thing that we are seeing is the loading. What is the load time that your website is able to be delivered to the consumer within? We used to see that a load time of three seconds or four seconds was compatible and we could have a pretty uh, stable local search visibility within. And now Google's saying, hey, four seconds or three seconds is no longer the standard. We want you to load within two or two and a half seconds. And so all of that put together, I think is uh, a key component for you to be aware of. And you can run tests on your website. If you do a search, uh, think with Google speed test, that will give you the ability to see what is the load time of your website and how and possibly what code or modifications need to happen on your site in order to be compliant. So again, that is think with Google um, speed test. The other thing that we need to be aware of is that Google has rolled out um, a new shift to their indexation and they're saying we need to begin to create power content. I apologize. I'm uh, working remote today. So uh, the I'm working near a train and so if the train is too loud my apologies but um, creating power content is all about taking multiple pages and putting them into one this is Google's example where they took six websites and merged them into one website in your marketing strategy, you probably don't have six websites, but what I would recommend is that you look at taking six pages possibly and merge them into one and not just cram all the content into one page, but think critically about what is the user experience from awareness to consideration to decision. And then if all of that content can be effectively put into one page, you have the ability for a mobilely engaged user to go all the way through the funnel without clicking and navigating anywhere. Those are content uh, entities that Google is looking at favorably and they want to rank you at the top of the search results. We, they also track how many conversions are happening on those pages. What is the um, session duration? And when you put all those pieces together, Google will say, hey, we have users who are converting off of this page now. They are spending more time on this page now. It is compatible with our user experience quality scores that we just looked at. We want to serve this page up to more consumers within our algorithm. And thus, all of a sudden you see a much um, more profitable return on investment for your digital marketing strategy. 
We also have seen in 2020 a significant advancement within Google's AI. Their artificial intelligence when it comes to image recognition has uh, always been present, but it is now fully implemented within Google's algorithm. So the impact of uploading images to your Google My Business listing, to your, uh, your different digital platforms, yes, they read Facebook images, yes, they read other social platform images, is going to have a weight on where you rank within Google's algorithm. So we have uh, been working very hard as an agency uh, to upload images to Google My Business. We have software that connects us to their open API so we can do structured data elements, but you can have a significant return on investment just by uploading images to Google My Business and saying, here are the products and services that we offer. This is what our business looks like. So that would be a key walk away and say, okay, one of my action items is to begin to upload images to Google and make sure that those images are a true reflection of the products, services, and um, experience that we provide at our business. So you can see from this uh, illustration that Google's already identifying consumers, um, products, services, the location, and uh, all of this is going into the AI and it's starting to pinpoint your business as a certain type of um, service or experience provider. We have also seen a significant advancement in voice assistant payment opportunities. And you might say, hey, Anna, this is really not um, uh, something that we're interested in at this time. But I will say that the uh, growth of users who are beginning to use voice activated payment solutions is rising. So it's something to keep your eye on. And I probably uh, would have said if, it hadn't been for the pandemic that this would be something that we should look at in 2022, 2025, but today is a very different picture. We saw, and I think this is key, a significant rise in e-commerce uh, spending in the, we can see April, May, and then in June, we began to taper off towards the end of uh, June, the first part of July, it turned back into kind of that baseline. But I am predicting that we will see a return of this a spike as we go into the holiday shopping season. Why? Because we as Americans have experienced and been able to overcome some of the shortfalls of uh, online purchasing. We've, we now understand what that experience looks like. And in some cases, the ease that we can just uh, jump on our phone, shop from a local vendor or a national supplier and have that product delivered to us without having to drive somewhere. And so this, if you are not currently looking at e-commerce opportunities for the holiday um, season and just with weather and circumstances, I would strongly recommend looking at how your business can introduce some form of e-commerce opportunities to make sure that you are capitalizing on this uh, shift in user behavior. So let's turn to social. What is happening within uh, social media? And I don't know about you, but I have seen personally a rise in my friends and local um, networks utilizing social media uh, messaging options as their primary form of communication. I live in a rural area, as do many of our target consumers. And so I'm not always able to be at a location where we have easy access to a strong cell signal. So, but I may have Wi-Fi through a DISH internet service provider. And so that then means that we have the ability to have an accelerated usage of messaging opportunities through social media. You can see the demographics and the growth of these different um, user groups. And it is significant. The um, users who are not only mobily engaged, but they are using messaging platforms outside of traditional standard text messaging um, services. 
We talk about Google so much and we talk about Facebook. Um, why? Because they are the dominating platforms and they hold a market share or ownership of a wide variety of other social and search um, opportunities. And so I wanted to look at what is the Facebook demographics and is it female weighted or is it male weighted? And obviously in your business, uh, you are going to have to do a specific um, in-depth audit. But what we can see here is that there is a, an accelerated male uh, engaged user in some of the younger uh, demographics. So that 18 to 44 year old, even into 54 year old, um, more males are on Facebook than there are females. And this is a shift. If we had looked at this a couple of years ago, it would have been a very different story. So make sure as you're doing Facebook advertising, you're utilizing all of the different targeting opportunities to tap into your specific audience. But again, at a high level, that's an interesting shift. We have also seen an um, engagement modification. And many of us are sitting at probably less than 10,000 active followers. But uh, it's key to notate that your organic engagement is going to be minimal. Facebook um, studies have shown that unless you have promotions or you have um, key engagement uh, call to actions, you are probably going to see minimal likes, shares, or comments on your social content. Why is this? It's because Facebook is saying they want to begin to monetize business pages. So businesses are turning to groups. They are turning to um, the uh, Facebook marketplace. Uh, there's more and more opportunities for you to diversify your marketing strategy outside of just monetizing and saying, okay, we're going to boost that post, we're going to run ads. But just be aware, if you're all of a sudden looking at 2020 uh, stats and saying, our engagement is worse this year than it was in the past. But, and why is that? Why could it, how could it be? Because our target consumer was stuck at home. We know they were very active in social media. And this is why Facebook has made algorithm shifts that are taking the user and having them see a reduction of business pages. Instagram. Instagram has a slightly elevated engagement rate, but again, it's minimal. So look at those alternative opportunities so that you can win big if you don't have a budget behind your social strategy. Top social platforms. This is again a great report. And I think this is um, insightful. As I was meeting with a, a local board here in Northern Minnesota, they said, hey, Anna, we should get into TikTok. Why aren't we doing TikTok? What is uh, the value that TikTok offers for our business? And I recommend that as we look at this uh, chart, that you focus on the platforms where your audience live with lives within. If your audience is a prime audience for TikTok, then by all means, dive in, test it out. But don't just go and do one platform. Do two or three, but make sure you do them well. And tailor your content so that that audience sees the message that they are willing to engage and convert through. So how long are people spending on uh, digital uh, mediums. And so here is a very recent stat that rolled out the end of uh, September. And so uh, these uh, data points used to be a yearly report that would come out in October. Now we have seen quarterly rollouts and starting in September, we saw the first rollout of a monthly edition of global and US consumption of media. So I just wanted to share this because I think it's uh, telling that your consumer is, as we thought, very digitally engaged, but it's a um, much higher percentile than many of us would have expected. Now we have, okay, what are they doing as they're, uh, 
digitally engaged. And this is saying, okay, we are watching streaming uh, shows. We are uh, engaging with mobile apps about 36% of the time. And so as you're making shifts to your digital marketing strategy, look at this and say, okay, how do we need to pivot based off of this data? Are we putting that too little time into messaging and or zero percentile of the time and should we have someone allocated to making sure that we are responding and reaching out through messaging uh, opportunities i love this study because it talks to us about the uh, impact of what our consumer is looking at and wanting and what we as business owners think they are um, needing and wanting. And the walk away is, is your social media and a branding entertaining? And many of us say entertaining, Anna, how do I make it entertaining? It's very hard to um, make my business funny or uh, what can I do to kind of make a contest? Think out of the box. Um, Look at your culture within your uh, company business and say, okay, that was really uh, funny that we can make that entertaining. And so, uh, for example, our business, we uh, randomly had a, a team member uh, sitting at his desk and he goes, hey, Riley, what, are, what color are you going to wear? Let's wear mustard. And so it was one off the cuff comment. We ended up having four people hear that they all wore the color mustard we had one person wear red and so we had this very funny social media post that rolled out very organically and said hey uh ketchup is uh er we talked about how ketchup was trying mustard was ahead and ketchup was trying to catch up but mustard was really relishing it so it it just it happened um and we ran with it and we got some pretty decent traction. Another uh, time our team was on a Zoom call and just as a joke, they all changed their Zoom background to reflect their uh, team leader and he just bust out laughing and it was just a hilarious post. So if you go to Art Unlimited's social channel, you'll see that was yesterday's post. Um, and we had some uh, great traction. So how can you make these everyday experiences entertaining? And I think that's a key. Next, we see new opportunities coming from Nextdoor. I don't know how many of you are actively engaging on Nextdoor as a business, but it is an emerging platform. It is highly uh, leveraged within the um, metro uh, areas, and it is coming to rural America. So just be aware that Nextdoor is a platform you should be uh, monitoring. It has rolled out new business uh, service opportunities where you can uh, promote deals, you can see engagements, um, you can run ads. And as far as the cost to invest in this platform, it is minimal. So uh, check this out and um, we recently, for our company, we created a next door uh, community. We had, you have to have 30 individuals in order to create a community. I know Grand Rapids, Itasca County has a couple of different next door communities. Join those local communities to you. Begin to see what's happening and how can you leverage those users for uh, your business. So those are some of the massive shifts that we are seeing happen within uh, digital. And I just wanted to uh, share that with uh, each and every one of you so that you could begin to say, okay, how do mm -hmm. I pivot? How do I change? And what is the best uh, new addition for my business in 2021? Thank you everyone for listening. What questions can I answer? Um, I can ask a question. Um, so my name is Jane Shade and I am with Itasca Community College and then also a newer nonprofit called Next Career Pathways. So working with all the local high schools and um, community colleges and businesses to really create pathways for students um, to explore careers and then get into the workforce and build what our workforce needs. Um, 
and to build that pipeline. And so we are actually just going to start launching a website. We've never had a website or a logo or a brand and then also launching social media. And so I don't want to get too specific on my question, but what trends are you seeing in like launching social media pages? Um, either Facebook and Instagram, anything that you would recommend with some of the changes that are happening? Um, so I would, A, you have to have a, a page. Make sure that your ownership is properly configured for nonprofits so you can add and remove people. But as a nonprofit, I would look at what groups could you connect to to be able to get your message out there quickly. Um, Facebook's current algorithm is stating that um, you can uh, post in a group and it will automatically distribute to all of the um, members and that notification goes right into their newsfeed. So that's a great way to get a jump on um, tapping into an existing network. And it might seem rudimentary and you say, hey, groups have been around for a very long time, but we have been seeing a rise in community, um, kind of a, a digital community forming. And with 2020, that would be my recommendation is leverage groups as much as you can. Um, but don't forget about the traditional pages. Um, for you, I would say uh, start with Facebook and Instagram, connect those two accounts and to begin with, because you're going to be looking at leveraging your um, resources as much as you can. And as you have a following, you're going to be, begin to see that there's probably maybe going to be 50% who are followers on both platforms. But then there's going to be a widening audience that is going to just be Instagram users and just be uh, Facebook users. And on Instagram, what I would recommend is how can you create influencers? Inf influencers will allow you to connect with newfound audiences. So who are those um, individuals within Instagram that have, and because I'm assuming with the community college, you're going to have a little younger demographic. And so Instagram, when you begin to see who your individuals who like um, or comment or uh, re uh, share your content, if they have a large following, reach out and direct message them and say, okay, um, we really appreciate how you have just naturally been an ambassador for our brand, but let's, uh, is there any way that we could partner and we could give you a tailored custom behind the scenes experience that you would be willing to share with your audience? Thank you so much. That was really helpful. You bet. Any other questions? Caleb, what are you seeing as far as businesses as they are pivoting and changing? What are some of the common questions that you're getting there at the office? Um, so basically everyone, I mean, since the start of the pandemic when businesses were closed, um, we had a lot of questions on how you can use your socials, your social channels to sell their product or, you know, promote what, they, what they've been doing, despite the fact that they can't have, you know, customers inside. Um, and I think, you know, you kind of touched on it too, regardless of if those, even if the business has opened up now, there are still people who don't feel safe going to stores or don't feel safe going out in public. So continue to continuing to leverage those is kind of what we've been portraying to all the, the businesses that are coming to us. Yeah, we are predicting um, a significant spike in a messaging based um, communication in 2021. So I, I th agree that is definitely on point. Um, I would strongly recommend if you don't have someone um, dedicated or identified as you are the point person for not only social media, but you are in, um, empowered to respond to direct messages and even activate that communication, that's going to be a huge opportunity for a win in 2021. 
Yeah, and, and we for sure um, have seen Facebook is, you know, primarily what people um, are using, Facebook Messenger, I should say. Um, yes, yep. We are beginning to see um, where just people out of groups are saying, hey, would you like to uh, create a Facebook uh, Messenger uh, video call? And there's pop-up uh, games happening. There's pop-up, um, just like with Zoom, where we have this call. It's beginning to happen within uh, Facebook and other um, video communication platforms. So I would, again, um, look at that direct texting, direct messaging, make sure you have someone empowered who knows all the different components and how to leverage them for your business or nonprofit. Because if you can say, hey, to a group of people, let's jump on a video call and immediately resolve and bring uh, solutions to that group's uh, pain point, you've just become a hero in their eye. Yeah, and you know, we did talk about too, um, the text messaging. Um, is more yes. of, you know, an way of outreach now than email even, you know, we'd rather receive a text right at our hands than logging into our email to check and respond. Um, I think that's key. The only thing we're recommending to businesses is halt until after the election is over, right? How yep. many of us are getting <laughs> a daily text from a politician? And that's really turning <laughs> us off right now. So, but what it is doing is conditioning consumers to be um, looking at their text messages as just an, not just a friends and family form of communication, but I can actually do business um, through my text messaging um, platform text messages are opened at an 80 to 90 percent open rate and usually people will do some form of uh, response to that text message you have to obviously uh, create value there as well the key that i would recommend if you're doing text messaging is whatever platform you select make sure that the consumer can call the number that they are texting there's a lot of text messaging platforms you cannot call that number it's a text only phone number uh, number. I saw Jane, you had unmuted there for a moment. Do you have any questions? Um, yeah, I have another question about um, on Facebook, the messenger system and the response time that Facebook tracks. Is that a concern or consideration about the response time that businesses or organizations and groups should have when working with their consumer just because um, we're just getting started up like I was saying and if we don't have someone dedicated or 24 7 being able to respond to those messages is that a concern that if our response time is lower um, it it is a concern but I think the biggest thing is do your best right um, and then what you can do is you can say here are most commonly asked questions because there's an auto response message you could put on that uh, messaging platform and say, here's five questions that we most commonly get. We understand this might not be your question and we'll be respond as quickly as we can, but hopefully this uh, helps you in the in-between. So those are ways that we've worked with businesses to kind of overcome those shortfalls because everybody sits in that seat at some point. So, um, just make sure that you have the notifications turned on on your phone. Facebook is rolling out a new uh, app advancements so that you have a more uh, robust experience as a manager to the page. But um, yeah, it's a real thing. If you look at uh, Google, how they're saying, okay, uh, the speed to load is an important ranking factor. That's one of the reasons why they're checking your response time on messages and uh, Google's beginning to check the response time on phone calls even they're rolling out advancements to Google my business so just do the best you can and really leverage that auto response uh, feature and put in a reminder like on a quarterly basis to check that I don't know about you but sometimes we feel like we check a box and all of a sudden we don't have to go back to it but our consumers behavior and requests are changing so I always revisit that. Great question. Thank you so much. Anybody else have any questions for Anna at all? Okay. 
Well, thank you, Anna, again, for your expertise and sharing you everything bet. that you know with us. Um, we will have this session recorded and posted to our YouTube channel um, for if you need, ever need to go back and revisit it. So. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining. Um, if you have questions and want to contact me, you can connect with me uh, via email, Anna at artunlimitedusa.com, or um, you can follow us on social media. Just search Art Unlimited, and we are a local northern Minnesota business uh, based out of the Cook, Minnesota area. Awesome. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.